Here in preferences, I can reload the last project. You'll see projects here in general. I can reload the last project I was working on or not. I can also automatic backup that project. So I come to here, no, yes. So I can back up the project I'm working on automatically as I work on it. Saves time that way. Recording audio, prefer project folder. This way if I record a vocal, I record some sort of sample sound or whatever I record inside of machine two, it will put it inside the current project folder I'm using. That means the audio files will be with the project. Now here we have to also have right here, what's this? We have metronome. Now here in metronome, I can enable it, sort of come off and on. See, I'll turn this off. You notice here in the top part of the uh, software UI, metronome's off, on, off, on. Now we have here, auto enable when recording. So when I start recording, the metronome will automatically start up. And I prefer that. Uh, you have to pick what's your best uh, setup for me that works. Now, I also have audio. I can set my audio up for this metronome and see how that works too. Matter of fact, let's close this out. Let's just start the project on something. And we hear a metronome right there, right? Now I'm going to go back to preferences now. And then here in preferences, I can lower it. I can raise it up. I can turn it off and put it back on, right? I have quarter note now. I can go to eighth note. I can go to 16th note. That's a little too much fast of me right there. And I can go back to quarter note, which is better for me. I can also go to here. And I said, maybe I'm going to start two bars, right? So I'd say start two bars and I'll go to here. And I'll say, I'll stop this. Let's say I want to get something here. I want to start a beat. Two, two, three, four, go. And then I'm recording automatically. So two bars. Let's go back to preferences again. And then here we have input, enable input. So here's input, record. So we got quantize, right? This is enable, this is link rather. So this is link. And you want to enable link. Enabling link allows you to link up with Ableton Live through a network. If you want to link your machine software to Ableton Live. Next we have here quantize. So I want I prefer to quantize when I'm recording and in play. So I prefer to have it here. Now, some guys don't quantize when doing some sort of hip hop tracks, but no matter what I do, I quantize and I want to make sure it sounds clean and good. Then I can go back and sort of give it that human feel. Now here also, usage data. So machine will take the data from your project and what you've been doing, it will go back to their system and they want to see how you're using it, what they may have missed out, whether it's a problem or a problem in the future. So you can check it out. You'll read more about it here in what is usage data tracking? And then we have also read privacy policy. So I'm going to go to audio now and preferences. And here we have uh, just pretty simple stuff. Interface. So the interface of the driver, which is the core audio I have here in the Mac. As you can see, that's the only thing I have, actually. Then we have device. So this is the device which would probably take in and capture the audio coming in, right? So here, as you can see here, I'm going to set it for a Telstream audio capture. I can also use built-in. I can also use my MacBook Pro. Now below that, we have status. Is it running? It is running. Then here we have sample rate. Now, this is really cool. I like what they've done over the years. Like it was 44 years ago, and then it's 48, but they've gone up to 192.00. That's really great that they can come up with these huge, awesome sample rates. But you got to realize, the higher the sample rate is, the larger the files are, and it will require a large hard drive to store uh, all the files for your recording. So be careful of this. Generally, I keep mine generally at 48, and you got to see what works best, best for you. Um, pretty much 44.1 works too, and so does 88 and 96, but these are going to be larger files the higher up you go. Then we have a buffer size. So I want to keep my buffer size pretty low when I'm actually recording vocals in. And you'll see here the latency gets less and less because I don't want to have someone record some audio in and in the headset, it'll be late. A little bit of latency will be late. So they're trying to record audio and hear it back slowly or hear it back where it's late. And we don't want that pretty much. So 
otherwise I'll keep it up to here and the more probably want to use for plugins and stuff I'll go up to here but I am using a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip and I have no problems next we have routing so I can route inputs I can route inputs into my machine software and I can also route outputs so here in this case my output is my Telstream which is going to uh, the audio for the recording of this session and that way I can record it along with the video no, normally I would probably just use not connected I'm not seeing outputs anywhere which is always kind of cool but if I come here and see if I change this and I go to built in it'll be different I'll just say built in here and that's my routing but you'll see here in output we can go up to 16 so 16 different outputs that will be stereo. And here my inputs will just be four. Now next we have MIDI. So I have sync and I have device. So in syncing, I may want to sync my machine software with another device or with another DAW system. So here I can send sync clock or I can receive sync clock or I can just cut it off totally. Now when it's on though, you'll notice here I have clock offset. Now sometimes you may need to offset when linking two different devices or systems. And so you can set that here with the clock offset. That's an offset for clock send. And here we have zero offset for clock receive because we're just gonna receive the clock. If there's a problem, I can go here or go there. Either way, plus or minus. If I go out of here again, go back to clock send, and I come back here, I want to put it right back over here, and we're good. Now next we have devices. So it's input and it's output. Now an input I have, I'm set to actually the machine to virtual input. I also have network MIDI with my Kai network for door control, to control the door. I also have here, network MIDI Akai network MIDI so I want to make sure I can control both ways but John I'm going to, just going to use right here for now I'm just going to use machine 2 virtual input now we're in default here's default right here and we have project default so standalone template I may have a template to standalone I'll click there I'll have a template somewhere in here if I want to use that I'm not using it and then we have plugin templates. So I have some plugins, a template for plugins. I'm not using that. We'll go over that later on as I get plugins and decide to use templates. We have metronome. So metronome, downbeat, metronome, upbeat. I can change it. Here they're the current same sample. Uh, simple, I click in here. I go like, okay, I'm gonna go to drums. I go to claps. I'll put a clap in right there, right? So I can put, use that clap. And I wanna use it, cancel that. No need for that. I'll stick right here I am. I want to keep it to be the rim shot 808. Now below here we have scene and we have section. So there are sections, there are scenes. So I can duplicate scene only or I can duplicate scene and patterns. Now this is important when making patterns and creating a scene where I'm trying to create a song or create a project, uh, different sections in a project. Uh, verse, chorus, bridge, like that would be in the song. Or just the intro, the laid back scene in a movie, then back to another part, all in one total section, which would be a scene. I have several patterns I could use. Uh, here I can link when duplicating sections. I had to link them up. I have pattern. So pattern length. So this is two lengths, right? My pattern could be like uh, one bar, but the length will be one bar. I may just make it two bars, that length of the pattern. I have grow pattern while recording. So let's have a pattern set for two bars, and I'm still playing some keyboard part. It will extend that pattern out to more bars until I stop playing. Well, I don't want to do that. Then we have sound lane height. Now I can get pretty big, make it twice as big, but when you do, it covers too much space in the UI, the user interface, and I don't like that. So I wanna keep my space to a minimum. And below here we have sound. 
which is our focus right here. You see here? That's focus or none. And this has to do with default MIDI input mode. Now our next option here is library in preferences. And here we have factory. And this is a huge library I've gotten here. This has gotten huge over the years. And so I've got a lot of things in here that I just need to have a library of, right? Of samples, sounds, then I've got a bunch of different effects and stuff that I get from different programs I already bought for machine. And they'll appear in here. Native Instruments, FM8. We have the George Duke Soul Treasures Library here, right? So this is the product here. And so this is all part of the library. If I open the library up, which I'm not going to do, let me I'll just look at it. Okay, let's leave that alone. Cancel that. Let's open the library here. Public. Cancel that. As you can see, the, where the locations are, this is library. This is user, shared, action, string. So user shared would be that I have it in my user section, right? Some I have it directly in the library here. Enhanced EQ is in the library. And so we can see the location of where these libraries are and these actual folders are. Here's user. So user data would be stuff that I, the user, just for me to use, right? If I have two people on this server or two people on this computer, okay, well, you know, I'll have my own user info, which is right here. Now below here, we have scan user content for changes at startup. If there are changes, it will scan it. I can also add, I can rescan everything. So I can come back to here. Is everything in there? Let's rescan the entire machine. Now mine's already been scanned. It takes a little while to do that, so I'm not going to demonstrate that, but you get the idea. We're going to search for stuff we think is missing. Now below here we have plugins. Now next up, plugins. And we have manage and we have location. So here in manage, we have plugin and here we have on this side the default. Unfortunately, I can't see that. There we go. I'll pull it over. There you go. Default configuration is right here. So we got default configuration. I'll move this back over here. And then here you'll see the plugins I have. I have a lot of plugins. I have more than I need. And it's great to have as much as I need here. And you can see them. Just the AU order units right there on top. I've got VST3 right here, VST3 right here, enhanced audio. So we have different plugins and different protocols for these plugins. As you can see right there, just lots of them, which is good to have a lot of plugins and I can manage them and I can go, this list is really long here and there's UDI there also as well. And then we have the uh, Velvet here and which is Air and we have a bunch of other stuff. So I have a lot of different plugins which I like to keep track of. And of course, the locations are going to be here. I've got some S or VST3s right here, plugins, library, audio, plugins folder, and I have VSTs right there. Here we also have more with the uh, full uh, arrangement of stuff I had for years, which are VSTs, and this is the location of them on my computer. Now, I can scan these VSTs too as well. I can come and scan them, and I can also add more locations if I wanted to have some extra locations on my hard drive, I would add those locations or to make sure that the machine software would recognize those locations. Then if I want to rescan, it will rescan to make sure they're still there. And then we go back here. This is just manager and locations for our plugins. Now our next option up is hardware inside of preferences. As you can see here, I have nothing selected. I have no hardware connected to my computer for my machine to software. But if you do have it, you come to here, you will have a drop down list. You will select which hardware is on. Well, probably it'll only be the only one that appears here, unless you've got two of them hooked up somewhere through the system. But that's how you hook it up. And this way, the machine to software will recognize that hardware and the commands that it sends out or receives. Now below hardware, we have colors. And of course, colors are always important. I like colors because I can keep my bass drum one color, my snare drum one color. I can keep a group of color, a sound of color, you know. And here we have load colors, so load automatically. And you'll see here it's scene, 
could be a color group specific color sound user group color I can click on that and we see the various colors we can actually apply for scene group and sound and of course load with colors I prefer to load colors I prefer to see the colors do what works best for you